welcome to our exhibit on Lewis and Clark. Uh, in case you're not familiar with these fellows, the man over here with the red hair and the beaver hat is William Clark, captain in the United States Army. His co-commander back here, Meriwether Lewis, uh, was also a captain in the United States Army. And the two of them were bringing an expedition all the way from St. Louis to the Pacific Ocean and back. They passed through our area on October 18th of 1805 on the way to the Pacific Ocean. And as they passed this location, which is near the two sisters, and you can see them across the river here, uh, they met a fellow by the name of Chief Yellowfit, this fellow right here. And Chief Yellowfit was a chief of the Walla Walla Indians, and he was quite excited to have the Americans visiting him. And he asked them to stay and visit with him a few hours, a few days if they could, and both Captain Lewis and Clark said they were in a hurry to get to the Pacific Ocean, but when they came back, they would spend some time with him. Well, they made their way down to the ocean on November 7th. They saw it for the first time, and uh, they spent a long, cold, wet, miserable winter down there. And uh, on March 23rd, just a little bit from today, they started back up the Columbia River. They were in canoes. There were 33 people on the expedition. And as they moved up the Columbia River, they remember talking to Chief Yellowfit, and he said that there was a shortcut that would save them many days and many uh, travails on the, on the journey if they could take a shortcut overland instead of going back up the Snake River. Well, they were excited to talk to Chief Yellowfit on the return trip. And as it turns out, uh, Chief Yellowfit met them on the 27th of April, uh, not too far from where we're standing now. And when he met them, he greeted them, asked them to come to their camp, and uh, Lewis and Clark said, of course they would. That evening, they asked if they could have a few hours to rest, uh, build a fire, eat, and uh, take it easy. And the chief not only obliged them, but he brought them firewood. And in case you haven't looked, this area is very short on wood. There aren't many trees here. And so that was a wonderful gift for him to give them. He also brought them some dried berries, some dried fish, and when it was all said and done, they had a nice night. The next morning, the 28th of April, Lewis and Clark uh, were surprised when Chief Yellowfit came to their camp. And he was leading this beautiful white horse. And he took the reins of the horse and he handed it to Captain Clark. He said, this is for you. Well, Captain Clark was astonished. If there was one thing the expedition needed at this point, it was horses. There were only uh, 18 that they had been able to acquire for this overland shortcut and they needed every horse they could find. And here was the chief bringing them not only a horse, but a very fine specimen of horse. So Captain Clark asked the chief, Chief Yelpit, what, what do you want in return? And Chief Yelpit indicated that he would like to have a brass kettle like this one in the background. Now, that doesn't sound like much of a trade, but if you considered how you were going to boil water without a metal container, you would understand the value of that gift. Well, Captain Clark had to tell the chief that Unfortunately, we didn't have any to spare. And so consequently, the chief said, I'll take whatever you think is fair in trade. Well, Captain Clark took off his personal sword and he handed it to the chief. And he said, from one chief to another, this is for you. And Chief Yellowpit was quite pleased with that. To sweeten the deal, he also threw in a few other minor items. Uh, he also promised the chief when they went down the river, he gave them a small medal, like the one he's wearing here, and he promised them a larger one on the way back. We're never quite sure from the history books whether he got his larger one or not, but we do know that he got at least one small one. Well, the chief was excited and he said, will you spend a few days with me? And of course, Lewis and Clark wanted to be on their way, but he convinced them, he said, you did promise me you'd stay. And besides, I've invited people from all the other tribes in the area to come and visit. Well, they couldn't say no to that. And that evening they built a large fire the people danced and sang. Uh, the two fiddlers from the Corps of Discovery brought out their fiddles and played. Uh, there was food, there was a good time. It was a beautiful spring evening. The stars were shining, the frogs were croaking. The, it was just beautiful. And the next day, the chief came back and he said, let's do it again. And uh, Lewis and Clark both said, we've got to go. And he said, no, you promised and I've invited more friends. Well, that night uh, they planned to stay and they did stay but it wasn't the same as the night before. The next night it, it thundered and lightning and there was rain and snow and sleet and hail and all the bad weather you can imagine, including a big wind. So that night they couldn't. The next morning, April 30th, 
chief came again and said, spend one more night. And this time the captains had to insist, we need to go. We have to get back to the United States. And so the chief had told him about a shortcut that took them over my shoulder here where you can see the sun coming up. And they headed out in that direction. They were gone for two days, and on the evening of May 1st, 1806, they were surprised when one of the men told them that they had left a steel trap back in Chief Yelpit's camp somewhere. Well, Lewis and Clark figured they wouldn't see that trap again. And wouldn't you know it, within a few hours, they looked off in the distance and here came three young men on horses. And as they got closer and closer, uh, Captain Lewis could tell that they were from Walla Walla. And he said to them, what are you doing? And they said, look, we brought your trap back. And he handed them the trap. Well, they were flabbergasted. And of the six men who kept journals, five of them at least, that we have recovered said that the Walla Wallas were the most honest, hospitable, and sincere of any tribe we have met on our journey. And they had met dozens and dozens of tribes. So the thing I'd like to leave you with as you continue your journey through Fort Walla Walla is that that same tradition of honest sincerity and hospitality is still prevalent here in Walla Walla. And I hope you'll enjoy our hospitality here at the Fort.